Wonderful. Dana Abercrombie, The Coalition, thank you so much for speaking to me. This Your, your episode was absolutely phenomenal. And what I wanted mm -hmm. to know was, did, it, was, did you feel there was an extra pressure? You're doing this art show, and it's your first ever time, but you also have the camera crew documenting everything. Did that make you more heightened to the art it is that you wanted to create? Or did that add kind of more stress to the project? I think at the beginning, it added stress just because of the unfamiliarity of it all. Mm -hmm. But the team were amazing. Pagan, Elena, Crystal and Sam were so soft and gentle with me that months, like a month into filming, I didn't feel so stressed. But in anything, I felt like they, you know, were the catalyst to make me go, do you know what? This is being documented. Let's really go for it. Let me put 100% into it because then that way I can always look back on this moment and have it. Like who else can say they've got their first solo documented, you know? So mm. it really made me go, let's just make this a really good one for who I am in that moment. And then I can never look back in stress or fear or angst. Right. What I loved was the use of Bible stories because you are Jehovah's Witness and religion is very important to you. Now that as you show that in your solo show, I was wondering, does that dictate the art that you create in general? I think it used to. I think before I did I Love Campbell, I was very scared to offend people. I was, I was scared to offend my family. And I also didn't quite understand how growing up as a Jehovah's Witness sat within this vessel that I am now. But doing all of Campbell made me realize that so long as I'm exploring, so long as I'm curious, I'm not hurting anyone. And it is a part of me whether people like to, you know, agree with it or not. I'm happy that, not happy, but I accept that I grew up as a Joe's witness. And in acceptance comes, you know, the ability to play and, you know, use my life as my ingredients for my work, you know? You would write these really beautiful and interesting notes when you're going through your photography where it says deeper in terms of the color and blacker. Mm. Can you talk about kind of your vision behind that? It's so stark and beautiful. Why that? Because those series, specifically the self-portraits, I wasn't at the most healthiest, I would say, mentally, because mm -hmm. doing my love Campbell was an exercise for me to sit with myself and accept myself. But and in doing but in doing that, I had to allow all the parts of me to exist, not only the happy parts, you know, the parts that I question about myself, the parts that I may not understand about myself. And I did six portraits in the same um in the same um visual aesthetic. And I wanted it to be striking. I wanted to almost meet my camera, meet myself head on without any fear or with a lot of fear, but still just do it. And the drawings and the portraits are a accumulation of me throwing at myself, expressing myself or just staring blankly right at myself and being like, yeah, I love Campbell. And it's funny saying I love Campbell. I'm not saying I love myself. It's like, I love Campbell if I'm not talking of myself. So um, those portraits were very hard to make, but worth it. Wonderful. It touched upon mental health as well as you stated previously. Do you view that as that moment in your life as a breakthrough or a breakdown? It's funny. For years, it was a breakdown. It was a breakdown. <laughs> felt like a deterioration of my mind. But as I've gotten older, it was a breakthrough because I know so much about the world now. I know so much about people. I know so much about mental health and emotions. And it made me now look back as I really was just walking through the fields blind. <laughs> now mm -hmm. I'm a bit more sensitive in the best way possible. And I think it encourages not just me, but also people around me to take their mental health seriously. So for me, it's a superpower. I can tap into it and in and out. And I've accepted I may not be, you know, there's certain things I cannot do and that's totally fine. 
um, I don't have FOMO, but instead I'm like, the more I get to know about the human mind and my own, the more the world seems more colorful and beautiful. So I think, you know, mental health isn't an illness to me. It's just, you know, like the sky's blue. It just is. Mm -hmm. You talked about leaving your agency when you did for celebrity photography to joining your friends in order to kind of re recreate yourself in a way of mm -hmm. finding that art that you originally loved. Can you talk about how that experience has transformed you today in your art right now? Yeah, hundred percent. I'll just I'll just say that the previous agent I was with wasn't necessarily just that I was doing celebrity. Mm -hmm. I think I was signed very young, in my mind, and I didn't. I hadn't really fully grown or figured out who Campbell was, so it just wasn't a fit at that time. And I was doing amazing work and work that I love, but I came to a point where. I was at a crossroads. I was like, if I do not make a change now, the next 10 years is going to be a very different year for me. So what do I want? You know, not just business wise, but it was also creatively. I just wanted to go back to the basics of who does Campbell think he is? What, you know, now that I've got this, you know, small successes in my life, go back to the start. What, you know, what were you doing before all this came along? And I think, what I needed was just a space where I felt loved and facilitated for all my crazy ideas. And nine times out of 10, um, artistic agencies aren't going to not allow it. It isn't right fit for someone like that. I was just very blessed to have a friend and a colleague who had grown with me. So that conversation didn't need to be had. They kind of saw it already. So when I said, I want to go back to basics, they're like, cool, this makes sense. And it allowed me to really have confidence in every venture I've done since because I'm not having to explain a lot to them. I'm just having to say, I want to do this. Can you help? Um, and it's been mind changing. I have a lot more confidence in the ideas that I have now than I used to. What would you say were the best lessons that you learned by putting on that art show? Your first one that you wanted for so long that you carry now into the future with other shows? I think production is a skill, for sure. Production is a skill. There's a lot of things I'm going to do my next show backwards. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to have all my work done weeks before. Um, I learned that I have an amazing community of artists and friends. And I've learned that my mind isn't just singular. I, you know, in the exhibition, I designed sound, I designed scent, I designed the set design with Ibi and Joya. We, you know, we did promotional materials and all of this was just me and my friends, if I'm being very honest. So it taught me that, do you know what, with a, with a fab idea and a loving community, I can go a long way. Whereas I don't think I could have said that two years ago. Can you tease some of the themes from backwards? Say sorry? Can you tease some of the themes from backwards? The themes from my the, show? The art show? Yeah, yeah, the show, you said you were working on backwards? Oh, the next show backwards. Yes, oh, I can't, the next I can't okay. tease any of that, I'm afraid. Okay, <laughs> okay. that's fine with me. Um, what I also loved about this, it touched upon the family. With mm -hmm. this documentary, have you found that the family is more open and accepting of both the art and you? Um, I would say no and yes. I have okay. found that by doing this documentary, I've accepted myself. Mm -hmm. And once I accepted myself, I don't think there was any work for anyone else to do. Because I think I realized I come into the space already anxious, already oh, no, you're not going to like it, or you're going to dislike me. And they pick up on that. So I move with confidence in my relationships now. Either leave it or take it. Take it or leave it. Um, but they've become stronger. Me and my brother, a lot, you know, when I see his part in the documentary, it always brings tears to my eyes. But I think I, I think the issue was, not the issue, but I think the, the whole crux of the situation was I didn't fully accept who I was in front of them. And I say in the documentary that, 
my two lives kind of come to one. And I was like, what, what was I anxious about? Because when they're not around, I'm still doing this. So I just had to show them that I love doing this. Do you want to come on the journey with me? And also it was okay if they had said no as well, because you can't control other people, but you can only control your actions. But yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for speaking to me. It's a powerful oh, thank you. segment. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure.